Great, thank you. All right. There we go, we're all good. All right. Great. Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name's Carly Sherman. I am the occupational therapy assistant here at, uh, well, at Finley Junior High and at Ridge Central. And I'm Dina Jason. I am the physical therapist assistant and I am at uh, Chicago Ridge and Chicago Lawn. And we wanted to um, talk to you today about developmental play. We want to open our little chat with a video. So I'm going to share my screen with you here. Thank you. Okay, now I come over here, right, Dina? Dina's going to help me. So here's what I want to play. This ought to do it. I have a little bit of a slow computer, so just bear with me for a second. Um, you guys aren't sharing. Are you trying to share your screen? Not sharing. Okay, thank you for letting us know. We'll try again here. Let me know if you need any help. I might. Go back to our thing. Okay. Elijah, you have to share it from the new one. Your screen. And then hit screen, right? Yeah, share sound. And then hit share. You should be good. All right. Sorry, folks. I think we're good now. You're good. I can see it. Okay, great. I don't know why it stopped. Go ahead, Dina. Now Take it's care. frozen. No. Oh, won't it be nice when we can all just be in person together again? Right. <laughs> well, we can just, I suppose we could just skip it too. If you want me to try to play it, do that either way. Yeah, could you try to play it? Maybe yeah. I was just thinking. Yeah, maybe it's just like a computer thing. Okay. Does it just keep cycling? Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, and I'll just look up. Okay. Okay, you might have to make me the host again. So we're gonna stop sharing. <laughs> and then hold on. Yep. Okay. You should like just go to my face on the Zoom link and then press. You just delete. Oh, okay. you did it. Okay. Are we in business? Okay. Yep. That's working.
what if I was to tell you that a game of peekaboo could change the world? <laughs> Sounds impossible, right? Well, I'm here today to prove it's not. Hi, I'm Molly, and I'm Seven, and this is my little friend Ari. Say hi, Ari. <laughs> hi. Oh, and this is my neighbour, Alma Jot. He has to take Ari away now to get ready for our experiment. But don't worry. Well, maybe we'll have to just move on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we, should we stop share? Yeah. Okay. All right. So for whatever reason, my computer is crabby today, and that's okay. We'll just continue on. The idea of this video was talking about the fact that a child's work, their job is play. And when kids play, that's how they learn. It's through play that they develop all of their gross and fine motor skills. Gross motor skills being the big coordinated movements that they need to make and fine motor skills being the smaller coordinated movements of the hands, the more precise movements. Um, play also helps them develop their executive functioning skills, which is just a way of saying, learning how to uh, make decisions, learning flexible thinking, being organized, staying on topic, all of the jobs that the brain has to do as it develops and grows are enhanced by play. Playing, we also know, promotes self-confidence uh, and sensory processing, which is the awareness of information that the body is receiving through all of our senses. Um, so we can't really under, understate the importance of play in a child's life, right? As far mm -hmm. as their development yeah. is concerned. However, we are both parents, we are both realists, and we know how hard it is to find time to sit down and play, devote time simply to playing with your child when you're juggling all of the other responsibilities that we all have every day. Um, so our goal today is to provide you with some ways to play with your child that will foster their developmental growth. Um, but the catch being that none of these activities should require items or materials that aren't already in your home. And these are things that you can incorporate into activities that you already do every day. So we wanna help you find ways to play with your kids that are really gonna easily fit into your life. Um, you don't have to stop what you're doing to make sure that they're getting enriching playtime because it's gonna be while you're doing things that you're doing already anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that we don't realize is that a lot of the things that the kids are already doing, they're already learning development. They're already starting to do that. We just need to maybe make it a little more challenging for them. Um, encourage them to do it a little bit more. They always want us right next to them. They always want us to play. But sometimes we can encourage them to do things on their own and play, um, give them some things to play with so that they'll get, start to get some of that independence. And hopefully after we start incorporating the kids being more active with us and some of the things that we do every day, they can also become your little helpers and help to do some of the things for you so then you won't have to do some of those responsibilities yourself. Yep, we all want little helpers. And so mm -hmm. if they can be helpful and learning at the same time, that sounds perfect to me. Um, we're gonna go through four uh, scenarios or activities that are a part of our everyday routines. And we're gonna talk in each, in each uh, scenario about ways to incorporate developmental play into that scenario. And then um, which areas uh, this play will help develop. Okay. So we're going to start 
with just walking to school yeah or walk, going on walks yeah. walking to school going on walks we do this all the time it's a beautiful day out today um we've been cooped up in our houses and our apartments for the past couple of months so today would be a great day to try any one of these things um simply when we're walking to school coming home to from school you can collect items from nature uh rocks sticks leaves that kind of thing this is kids want to do this they want to collect things they love to have their little collections yeah so. they're doing it anyway mm -hmm. right i mean i know my kid was always wanting to bring some nature pile of crunchy whatever's into my into my house and yes. the rock collection was ever growing so they're instinctually wanting to do this but we want to let them do it because it gives them a sensory experience so they've got they can feel the different textures of all the items that they're collecting is it crunchy is it soft is it hard um the items are going to make different sounds the clanging rocks together um and they can explore what qualities they have are they lightweight are they heavy are they sharp are they are they smooth um are they rough then you can if you don't want them in your house maybe you have a box outside and they mm -hmm. can stay in the box outside of you know by the by the front door and then you can put them in categories we're going to put all of our big items in one box and all the little items in another box um soft, soft items, items hard items, items. whatever yeah. it is you want to kind of work on with your child that day um this does not require any you don't have to purchase anything from the store nothing like that you you're picking up the things that are laying around your neighborhood. Um, and then I always like to just point out that it's it's um, really excellent to, rocks are excellent canvases. They're free canvases. Every I think mm -hmm. rock painting actually has become kind of popular. Yeah, it's back again. Yeah, so painting rocks is an excellent, in my house, that's a rainy day activity for sure. Mm -hmm. Just setting up with paint, all the rocks that we've collected. Sometimes then you could even go hide them back out in the neighborhood once they're done take a walk and put them in people's yards give them a nice little fun treat to find mm -hmm. okay you can have a pet rock you know if you don't have paint you could just use chalk yeah um if you wanted to just blue googly eyes or something else you might right. have around the house on construction paper right whatever it is around the house for you to use so collect those items then the next thing we were talking about as we're taking a walk that you could do is to take chalk with you and draw as you go. Mm -hmm. um, this is really a great way for pre-writers to begin to develop the muscles in their hands that they're gonna need for writing later on. Don't worry if they're switching hands, if sometimes they're using the left hand and sometimes they're using the right. That's okay. Hand dominance is going to take care of itself. It's going to develop on its own. Um, the more opportunity kids are given um, to color. So we want to we want to be outside using chalk again, just easy to do. And if you can't, if you live in an apartment and you can't leave the building, maybe you have a little a little patio area. You can even mm -hmm. do it um, right on the patio. Yeah. And when you're outside with them. Don't be afraid to let the kids get on the ground and get on their hands and knees to color. Kids, we don't like it as adults. We don't mm -hmm. like to be on the ground. We don't <laughs> like to get dirty, but kids are just drawn to laying on the ground and sitting on the ground and crawling. Um, all of those things, being on your hands and knees, sitting there, those are great experiences, sensory experiences, and you're strengthening um, your shoulders and your trunk right, right there, and they're just, just play it in everyday activity and the strengthening of the trunk and the shoulders is all going to play into being able to write as they get older so again it seems like such a simple activity to just let them color with chalk on the sidewalk on their hands and knees but you are furthering uh their brain development by doing so um i love to use a little spray water bottle when we play with chalk because wet chalk makes the the colors get more and more intense and you know kids love water so if you give them a little spray bottle and they can squeeze the area that they just colored they're again they're using those small muscles in the hand there's eye hand coordination um motor coordination in order to do that and it enhances the sensory the sensory piece of this um also drawing a 
uh, something you could use the chalk for is to draw a hopscotch. Hopscotch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopscotch is a real fun activity. Um, you can make a sensory path. Um, you could have draw little squiggly lines so they follow the squiggly line all the way around. Um, you could do a circle so then they they hop in the circle or they use one foot in the circle or they just touch it with their hand. Um, some of the rocks they collect, they could throw it to the circle that you just drew like hopscotch. Oh yeah. Um, draw, you know, draw one circle, two circle, going in, jump in one foot, two foot. Um, so they're following directions, mm -hmm. right? If you're, you know, they might even be inventing a game, which would be a great executive function skill, but they're following directions. If you're telling them, okay, jump in the circle, jump out of the circle, in the circle, out of the circle. Mm -hmm. um, and they're getting some big gross motor movement and coordination at the yeah. same time. Absolutely. And once in a while, we can always jump in there with them. They always love it when we're jumping along That's with true. them. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's always mm -hmm. better. Yeah. Um, we also talked about doing silly walks. This again, I think is another thing that kids do instinctively. Mm -hmm. And we tend to um, lose our silly, some of our silliness as we, as we get older, but the sillier, the better, the different ways that yeah. they can move their body and the sillier ways they can walk. It just gets those large muscles moving to improve their overall coordination, their strength, their endurance, and they think it's an absolute blast. Yeah, and if mom's there doing a silly bear walk with them, forget it. They're gonna love it. Though yep. that would probably be one of the best things they do that day. Or if you're hopping down the street like a bunny rabbit, yeah, they'll be like, "Mom's silly." Yeah, to see mom be silly is really pretty yeah. funny. The other thing you can do is we have there's always the cracks that are on the lot um, in the sidewalks mm -hmm. for work on balance. You can have them walk along the line. You can have them jump over the cracks. You could have them walk backwards over the cracks. Um, and then there's the line of the sidewalk in the grass. You could have them walk, try to stay on half grass, half the sidewalk. So they're working on uneven surfaces. Oh yeah. And a different, that's a sensory experience a sensory too, experience. because you've got mm -hmm. a soft and a hard on different sides of the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can have them take off their shoes. If you're comfortable with that, that might be something else to yeah. get their feet a little bit more um, used to the different textures. Um, that's another great thing. And it's just right out the front door. And I feel like this is an, all of these things are really, this is, those are great examples of things that kids are going to do instinctually. Yeah. So we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just following their lead. Yeah. You know, as you're out walking with them, whatever you see them take an interest in, just find a way to join them or heighten the experience yeah. for, you know, oh, that's great hopping. Can you do it on one foot? Can you hop over this crack in yeah. the sidewalk? Can you hold your water bottle when you're hopping? Oh yeah. Just those things that might sound, sound simple, but those are just those little things that help to keep those kids moving. That's right. Um, it doesn't take much. The other thing we talked about when we're going on a walk is um, taking just bubbles and blowing bubbles. And then, you know, what you can do with that is kind of endless. They chase them, they pop them, they catch them. Of course, they always want to blow them, which is really actually a pretty difficult movement to coordinate, especially if they're going to be involved with taking the little wand and getting it into the small hole, making sure there's solution and then blowing. That's a lot of motor planning. That's a fantastic thing for them to work on. These are visual motor skills, which is their eyes and their body working together. Um, these are visual perceptual skills, which is what allows them to copy from a board later on as an older student. So again, something as simple as blowing bubbles with them on a regular basis is enriching their educational abilities down the, down the road. The other great thing that um, blowing bubbles does is it's a coordination of when to um, take a breath and blow out. And that can also help with speech production as well mm -hmm. and breast support. So that's another great thing with blowing bubbles. And like uh, Ms. Sherman said, there's so many things, catch them, stomp them, um, try to kick them, yeah. pop them. Right, count them as count they're in them. the air. Mm -hmm. Another thing I really like to use bubbles for um, that may be helpful is um, when they need uh, a little assistance calming down, blowing bubbles makes you take a nice, a nice, nice deep, deep breath. breath. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes 
will in, even in here just blow some bubbles if we need to calm down because it takes their mind off it because now there are bubbles. And so what was I upset about? But also what it really does is forces them to slow down and take some good deep breaths. So that's just another time you might want to take bubbles out if need be. Yeah. So that's all stuff that we can do just while we're on a quick walk together. We're collecting items from nature. We're using chalk. We're playing hopscotch. We're doing silly walks and we're blowing bubbles. Okay. Yeah. And all these things sound like simple things, but I think with life, it tends to go by quickly and we're rushing from A to B. We need to kind of stop and slow down and say, we can do these simple things. These yeah. simple things will help help the kids develop later. That's right. Um, so the next thing we wanted to talk about are ways that you can incorporate developmental play into meal prep. I know in my house, that's like the witching hour. Like there's, everybody's done with their day. Everybody's tired. You're, their kids behave themselves all day at school and they're melting down and you need to make dinner. So it's kind of the last, the last time of day where you think, oh, I want to sit down and play with my child now. So we want to talk about some ways that you can incorporate them into meal prep. Um, they can always slice with a, with a butter knife, right? With the, or a, a plastic knife, um, soft foods like bananas. So if you're making a fruit salad, have them, have them cut the bananas. Is it gonna be the prettiest banana you've ever seen? No, but is it gonna help them grow developmentally and plant the seed that they need to take part in meal preparation? Yes, so there's a big benefit there. Um, let them scoop soft foods. Like if you're having yogurt, let them scoop it out of the container. Um, if you're taking tuna fish out of a can, take the sharp top off and let them scoop it out of the can. If you're um, serving beans, let them scoop the beans, anything soft like that. Beans, hummus, yeah. uh, yep. sour cream, so many things. Yeah. That they could do. Any, mm -hmm. Anything like that, that they can scoop, let them scoop. Um, let them break spaghetti before you put it into the pot. You know, you can give them a little bit at a time and you can hold the pot underneath them and just let them snap it. So then any little bitties that fall, they're going in your pot anyway, but they get, they get that fantastic bilateral coordination. They're working both sides of the body at the same time to complete a task and you get a little bit of help with food and they make, you know, I, I find that my kid was always a better eater when she helped participate in making the meal, mm -hmm. um, which was another, another bonus. So, and again, we're exposing them to different textures and sensations as they're interacting with all of this food. Yeah. Right. So um, not only does it give them something, uh, uh, an enhancing experience while you're preparing the meal, but hopefully they'll be more inclined to try out different textures because you're, be, you're exposing them to those. Yeah. And it might give them something to do instead of hanging at your coattails. And, That's right. And yelling for something to eat or for you to come and do something with them. That's right. Now let's say you're cooking something that, and there really just isn't anything that's appropriate for them um, to help with. One of the things that you can do while you're cooking is get them set up at the table with some Play-Doh. Play-Doh is, I think my, my most favorite kid's toy. It's my go-to, everybody loves it. It's the most fun. Have them mimic you. You do what mom does. So if you're cutting, they're cutting the Play-Doh. If you're rolling something into a ball, they're doing the same. Yeah. Um, they can scoop this. They can pinch little bits off, right? So they, So have them do, exactly what you're doing yeah you can if you're doing it at the counter pull a chair up have them climb up onto the counter have them be right next to you yeah they can sit on the counter yeah. and, and just be holding it and doing that um but yeah standing on a chair or mm -hmm. a stool yeah um you know requires a little more coordination and so that's great mm -hmm. and they're right by you you know they're safe yeah. And they're watching what you're doing. They would just love to do something, the same thing that mom or oh dad is doing for sure. And so if you want to make it even better, you can give them some dried pasta with their Play-Doh. Now, this again, sounds so simple, but this is to a kid opens up just an absolute 
absolute world of opportunity because now I can make the pasta stick in the Play-Doh. I can fill the hole in this pasta with Play-Doh. I can roll and cover up the pasta entirely and now I have to fish it out, right? So you can be giving them these ideas of what to do, but really if you give them dried pasta and Play-Doh, they're gonna take off. Yeah. They're gonna do, they're gonna do all kinds of stuff on their own. The other thing too is I've worked with a lot of families in their home and a lot of parents don't like Play-Doh. I understand it's yeah. messy, it gets in the carpet, um, whatever, I totally understand. But if you're doing Play-Doh and it becomes a special time and it's on the countertop, right. then they're gonna appreciate it so much more and they're really gonna wanna participate. So like, oh, I get to use the Play-Doh. I, I love playing with Play-Doh, but I get to, and I get to be with mom too. These are two big pluses, two big bonuses for them. They get to play with their, their fun Play-Doh and they get to be next to mom. Yeah. So that might be something if you don't want it, you know, if they don't get to play with it in the living room or something, then they have their special place where they play with the Play-Doh. Yeah. I'm, or even like a special tray, mm -hmm. you could use a tray like, you know, and the Play-Doh has to stay on the tray because I'm glad you brought that up mm -hmm. because not everyone enjoys the wonders of Play-Doh Play as yes. much as I do. Yes. <laughs> so, they might enjoy it until they have to clean it that's up. That's <laughs> right. That's very valid. So that's yeah. a really good, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. um, another thing you can do is you can give them some tongs. And you can have them pick up any food that's maybe going into a pot, um, individual pieces of pasta or anything that you wanna put into a bowl. Yeah. Vegetables. Yes, they can pick up the, and put into a bowl. The coordination to pick something up with tongs is absolutely the same coordination that they're gonna use later on to form letters when they're writing. Mm -hmm. So, so pencil. yep. So this is a one, that's a wonderful thing to do. Ha again, just having them transfer anything into a bowl is helpful. Okay. Now this one might sound a little bit scary. So just bear with me. Let them help you set the table. Now, <laughs> I, I don't mean, yes, take a breath. I don't mean, um, you know, give them your good plates and ensure that they break them. I mean, they can put the silverware on the table, right? They could, you could hand it to them and they can walk it over and place it down. You can have them fold napkins, right? If we just want to do one simple fold in half and then crease, that would be an excellent activity for them to do. Um, and who cares if the napkins are pretty, right? They're, they folded them, that's wonderful. Um, you could, Maybe for a couple nights a week, if you wanted them to participate in this, use paper plates or paper cups. And they could then actually put a plate in each place at the table. And I think they could feel so fancy mm -hmm. being allowed to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. When they're doing this, let them um, move the tables, move the chairs around so that they can get to the table. If they need to climb up on the table, on the chair, to put the fork down or to put the cup in a certain spot, mm -hmm. let them do that. And then when they're done, tell them they need to push that chair back. That yep. gets some heavy work that helps to build up some strength in their shoulders and their arms, which will help later um, with fine motor skills. Mm -hmm. um, you can have them get things out of the fridge. Maybe they're able to get the, the milk out of the fridge mm -hmm. or, or butter bowls or butter or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, let them open it, let them push a chair over to it, give them a simple task to do that, that they'll be successful in. Mm -hmm. And if a spill happens, they can help you clean up. That's right. I mean, spills happen. That's right. And we know that you're not going to want to do this every night. You know, mm -hmm. we understand, but We're doing this, too. yes, <laughs> but doing this a couple nights a week, really getting them involved is just tremendously beneficial for mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, this is all executive function skill. This is all stuff that leads to decision making skills later on. As they get more familiar with setting the table, what you could do as they get a little older is set one setting the way you want it and see if they can copy that. Okay, so I set it up. I set up a fork and a knife on the napkin and the plate. Can you do four more of those and see if they can if they can set that up? That's when they're a little bit older, but 
again, this is all sort of leading to helping them get to that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then eventually they're setting the table and you're not. So exactly. that's one thing off of your, yeah. your to-do list. Yeah. We're laying the groundwork mm -hmm. here for a kid who knows that at mealtime, I participate in some way. I need to be helpful in some way. Um, and the sensory experience of all of this, what's, what am I carrying that's heavy? What am I carrying that's light? Does it make noise when I put it on the table? You know, the, the jingling together of silverware. I mean, it's all offering them new experiences mm -hmm. that have value. Yeah, it teaches them how to work their muscles. If they're carrying a, you know, the heavy jug of milk as opposed to the light fork, their muscles are learning how to work differently. That's right. That's right. And then we touched on this a little bit, but we give them a wet cloth or a wet paper towel to help clean up. We love the idea of developing um, the independence in a kid to see, oh, something needs to be cleaned up and they go and do it. Um, and then again, making sure that we're laying the groundwork for a kid who understands that they need to be a part of cleaning up as well. Um, but this is generally a wet cloth is a, is a sensory experience that a kid is, a lot of kids are going to yeah. really enjoy. They're going to like wiping things up. And so if they want to sit on the kitchen floor and wipe the bottom cabinets, yep. they why can not you do that? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Can they wipe the table after the meal is done? That's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. Um, washing, washing mirrors, washing windows. Yeah. You probably have streaks, but at least they'll get to learn how to do that. They'll enjoy it. They'll be working their arms against gravity. Yep. Um, all this strengthening stuff that will help them later when they, when they um, get into school and start doing their fine motor tasks. Yep. And when they get into school and they are, they are expected to maintain their own space. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot easier when there's, when a child is a little bit used to cleaning up at home, you know, when you, when they know, okay, I'm done with these toys. So now I put them back in the yeah. bucket. They right? kind of know what's expected of yeah. them. Right. That executive functioning skill has already started, um, which gives them a, a really nice little leg up on, on some kiddos that haven't had that experiences. Yep. And we talked a little bit about this, but just using a stool or a chair so that they can reach the counter mm -hmm. um, will sort of step up the gross motor challenge because now they have to balance, right? Yeah. They've got to use their trunk muscles to control and make sure they're safe. Mm -hmm. So initially you can start with them kind of maybe even sitting on the counter by you, but then if you can progress yeah. to them standing on a yeah, chair. A chair or a stool. So they might be starting off sitting on the counter, then they go to like a regular dining room chair. Mm -hmm. And then to make that a little bit more challenging after they're good standing on that big surface is you, you go to the step stool, which is a smaller surface that there's nothing behind them. Yeah. So they're a little bit right. more aware of their body. Right. They can step up and down. That'll help them, you know, to learn how to do stairs, um, be able to walk up and down curbs. Right. Okay. So that's our, that's our meal preparation section. So it's just incorporating them into any and all food prep that you can, mm -hmm. um, incorporating them into getting the table ready to sit and eat and incorporating them in cleaning up. Okay. So now it's bath time. We want to talk about bath time. Um, one of the main things, having a bath is already a sensory experience anyway. You've got the temperature of the water, it's wet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're gonna talk about ways to sort of increase the sensory experience of the bath. Um, and the easiest thing is just bubble bath. They love it. It takes zero effort. Yep. They can do, they're, again, they're gonna take the lead here. You're just gonna encourage them. They're going to, instinctively start scooping, start gathering all the bubbles. They're gonna make bubble beards and bubble hairdos, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And if mom wears a bubble beard, that's, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. um, they can pop the bubbles, they can blow the bubbles into the air off of their hands and then catch them. You can get your water toys and hide them in the bubbles and now they have to find them. Mm -hmm. They can smack the bubbles. Yep. They can sort of come back and try to kick the bubbles or push the bubbles away. Yep. Um, do like snow angels in the bubbles. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Yep. Bubbles mm -hmm. are kind of a never ending uh, fun in the bathtub and it's all, it's all helpful. 
So we're big fans of bubble baths. Um, the other thing you can add to a tub, and we have some for you, um, are glow sticks. I get them at the dollar store and they are a really fun addition to a bath, especially if you turn the lights off. So if you wanna be like the coolest parent around, you get a couple of glow sticks, put them in the bath and then turn the lights off. And it, it it's is, party. it blows their mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, they think it's the coolest thing ever. And so, and then put some bubble bath in and now they have to find the glow, glow sticks, sticks under the bubbles. bubbles and yes, mm -hmm. um, this is all visual perceptual skills, which is how they're intaking uh, visual information and then and then making decisions based on that. Uh, but hide and seek to find those in a pile of bubbles is really wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course the the old the old standby of just giving them um, cups and bowls so that they can scoop and pour mm -hmm. and dump water, right? This is so effective for bilateral coordinate, coordination, mm -hmm. cause and effect. I mean, there are early math skills involved in just filling up a container with water, yep. right? Yep. I mean, it's the list goes on and on and on. It's important that they have time to displace to water mm -hmm. from one container to yep. another. And the bath is the easiest place to do it because they're already soaking wet. They're not going to get everything else wet. Right. It's just, it's, this is an important skill for them. And sometimes people will do it in other spots. But to me, the bath is the natural spot because I don't want to clean up a big watery mess by the sink. No, I really don't. Happens. It always happens. Yep. There's always water all over no matter what you try. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. or like, some or sensory table or something, you know, whether it's a water yeah. table, there's water on your floor. I don't want to do that. So let them have that experience in yeah. the bathtub. The other thing you can do to be silly with it, you can try to have them lift them up with their toes, see if they can pick up the little bowls and plastic items or toys with their toes and see if they can kind of grab the toys with their hands. Oh, yeah. So that way they kind of get to know. Oh, my hands and my feet, and they're working on some of the trunk and tummy muscles there. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, back to tongs, which we also have for you. Have them um, digging in the bubbles to find toys and pick them up with the tongs. That's another thing that you can, or, oh my goodness, you could grab, if you have a container filled with water, can you pick it up? with the tong, can you hold it with the, mm -hmm. ooh, that would be hard. And can you spill it over? Yeah. I'm I mean, looking at all these movements of their arm, their, their hand-eye coordination. That's right. Mm -hmm. And again, I feel like this is all stuff where your child is instinctively gonna take the lead here. Mm -hmm. And you are just there to say, to them. oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. just let's that try this. Mm -hmm. Yep, that is so cool. Try it again, or let's try it this way. Yeah. Kids know their job. Their job is to play. Yeah. We just have to make sure they love their job and keep on right. challenging them so that That's they right. love their job. That's a good way to put it. So, okay. So for bath time, we're increasing the sensory experience with bubble bath, maybe some glow sticks, and then lots of materials to scoop and pour. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we wanted to, to talk about watching, watching TV. TV. Dina. It's time to get off the couch when we watch TV. That's what we like to do. We just like to sit there, watch TV, relax. I do. It's great. I love it. Well, it's time to get off the couch. We're going to make it a little more challenging. So we're going to do simple things. We're going to get off the couch. We're going to sit on the floor, but we're not going to lean against the back of the couch. We'll just sit in the middle of the floor. Um, we can lay on our stomach. And why should we just sit in the middle of the floor, Dina, instead because of just we're, relaxing? If we're just sitting back here, we're not doing anything. Our muscles are passive. That when we're sitting up, we're working our muscles, we're working our trunk, they're more active. They're like, oh, what's going on here? Okay. And if you're sitting down there with your with your child on the floor, you're gonna feel it as well. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get down on the floor. I'm gonna show you some things and some positions that we can do when we're on the floor on the floor with our kiddos. Um, so we're watching a show and instead of being on the couch, we're gonna, yep, I got a little pillow. I'm just gonna take it. And we'll just sit just come down a little bit more. Okay. And we'll just do a ring sit on. So when I'm sitting like this, I'm working on my tummy muscles, my back muscles, my head control, everything. This whole part is active. But if I'm sitting on a couch, I'm normally just back like this. 
my shoulders are, are turned in, my belly's not working, I'm just kind of watching TV. But if I'm sitting like this, I'm at least my muscles are all working and they're active. And if they start to get tired and say, okay, well, we can get up when a commercial comes on. So if the commercial comes on, then you can get up and then maybe they can sit on the couch for a little bit, but then we're gonna come back down onto the floor. Another great way, and if you're on the floor with them, you're gonna feel it, is to lay on your stomach. So you can take the pillow and you can lay it underneath you. Yeah, let me just come down a little bit there. So you're gonna be like this and you get a TV right there. This is a great position to work on so many muscles. It helps to build your shoulder muscles, your tummy muscles, your back muscles, your head control, um, all the way down to your, your glutes, your tushy muscles and into your legs. Um, and then you might see some kids down like this. That's good too, still getting some good work. This is the best work though, is up like this a little bit. And you'll feel it after you're here for a little bit. Kids don't play on their stomachs like they used to. Then mm. this is one of the best positions. Plus it also helps to stretch out their hips and their back. When most of our kids are either sitting in school or sitting on the couch or sitting there on their video games. So, so playing video games propped up Oh, like that could be good too. Mm -hmm. Just bring it up. Yep. So if they're playing a video game, here we go. If they're playing a video game. Instead of them sitting on the couch, have them sit on the floor, and then they can have their little video game like this too. That's another great example. Um, they're looking at their iPad. They can just sit there on the floor like this, or they can go back onto their stomach, lay on their stomach, and put the iPad in front of them. Um, the other thing you can do is take your cushions off the couch and put them on the floor. Take two of the big cushions and just lay them on the floor and then they can just take, um, just lay on the floor and that'll help build their strength as well. It seems kind of silly to bring the cushions off, but the back of that couch is something that we have a gen general tendency just to fall into. So if you take that back support away and you bring the couch down to the floor, you're working so many more muscles. And it just help, it helps to um, improve their attention as well. So they might get more out of the show. Um, the other thing you can do is if you have a coffee table, is you can take the pillow and have them like this. And then they can just lean on the table like this and watch TV if they want to. Um, this is a great position. It helps to work their hip extensors and their shoulders and their trunk. So this is another great position. This is a great position to play in too. If they're doing a puzzle, reading a book, um, put the table right in front of them like this. And then they can just look at the iPad, um, do a video game. So all these positions, your body's more active than more passive than sitting on a couch. Um, the other great thing you can do is Oh, laying on your side, I almost forgot that one too. Laying on your side. So you can take the pillow, you can put the pillow like this and you can lay and watch. It helps to stretch out your, your muscles, helps to work one side, the other side's resting so you can watch a show like this. You can get up like this. Again, you work in your shoulder muscles. There's so many great ways to watch TV and be a little bit more active. The other fun thing to do that isn't is I don't think kids do it as much as they did when we were younger but is to build uh, forts so you can take a sheet or a towel and take the cushions from the couch and just cover it up I kind of made a little one over here just of what we had here but they can just kind of go up underneath here and then they can watch tv in their little fort kids love it once you start they're not going to stop watching wanting you to make forts. So you can just take your cushions and stack your cushions up and put towels over the side. That's also a great little sensory, sensory experience. And sometimes the kids just like to get in there and calm down and mm -hmm. have their own little secret special place too. Mm -hmm. So those are great suggestions, I think, because we all know that they're all they're all watching TV mm -hmm. for some portion of the day. Yep. Um, and it gives everyone a break, but let's yeah. make them a little bit more active when they're taking their break. And again, 
all we're saying, all you're, you're saying we have to do is have them change into a slightly more challenging position mm -hmm. instead of just relaxing on the couch, mm -hmm. just getting more muscle yeah. involved. Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty easy fix for a nice return on investment, I think. I right, think you. Now, my thinking is we just don't mess with the, we had some video, another video we were going to show, but now I'm, now I'm frightened. To show a video? Well, of the technology. Well, let's you think try. it will work? Yeah. Let's She's try so one. good. She says, let's <laughs> try. Okay, Miss Dina. So this is going to be you. Yes. So we have some, a couple of videos of uh, just some activities to do at home with things that are laying around the house. Uh, how we were talking about a step stool or a towel. Um, these are just some ideas that you can do to help uh, challenge their coordination and their balance and their sensory experiences at home. So we're gonna kind of give it a try and see how it goes. Okay, so now can we go to my, how do we get to my bookmarks? Yeah, here's the number two. Here's the second okay. video. Yeah, that's it. Oh, look at that. Dina's so good. Thank goodness she's here. Let's see if it well, works. We'll see, right? It might be your computer today. My computer has been through a lot. Today. So they're just standing on books, right? Yep. And they're just putting magnets up. You can use stickers. Just reaching for a balloon. Oh, that squish and Play-Doh. You can just have them step up. It's going to be three. Another video of just some easy ideas. Things you can do at home. Here I am. So just a bin and a towel, a rolled up towel. A laundry basket, you can also use a box. It doesn't have to be a bed. So he's doing a lot of work to, to stay upright. 
right of the knee. Yep, doing a lot of balance reactions there, plus catching the ball. That's, that's double the fun, double the work. And this can be, um, two siblings could be playing this game as well. It doesn't have to be loud, but it's two siblings. And this one is easy. The ball's just in there, and he's just trying to make it go from one side to the next. And then just put him out. You can also use that. I don't teach. <laughs>
now she's going to cover it with a balloon. And they're using it to fling little pom poms. helping him a little bit. But this is great because he's working on a pincher grass, which you're going to see is one of our next, you're going to see that grass start to establish itself in your kiddos. Oh, now he's filling the balloon. Or scooping and pouring. So we have um, some informational packets for you guys with um, a little bit of written material, mm -hmm. but maybe more exciting. We've got tongs, we've got glow sticks for the bath, yeah. and we've got sidewalk chalk. And we've got them bagged up and ready for you to pick up. And they are in the lobbies of both Ridge Central and Ridge Central. Lawn. Um, we have limited quantities, so mm -hmm. so come on over and go into the lobby and grab yourself a bag of goodies and have a glow stick party. Yes, in the bathtub. Um, before we're before we say goodbye, does anybody have any questions for us? Anything you want to know? No, thank you for sharing. Thank oh my you. gosh, thank, thank you, you for so being much. here. We really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we hope it was helpful. It was. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure, bye -bye. You just make sure, make me the host again really quick before you end the meeting. Okay. And don't forget do to tell that? your child's teacher um, that you attended this uh, workshop and they'll check you off the list. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie, how do we make you the host? Go up to my picture on the top right corner, press those three little dots. Okay. And it should sit this one of the options should say like make post. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Perfect. Thank right. you. Thanks Thank everybody. You. Thank